Hi everybody, it's Megan Zeckman with Education Possible. And today, um, my hubby's actually here. He's going to be um, scoping with me. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, this is my hubby Craig. Hello. <laughs> and we are here, we're going to talk a little bit about um, raising compassion in charitable teens because we have a teenager and a preteen and we are trying to do what we can to raise them to be as compassionate and charitable as they can. And so we wanted to share some of the things we've done over the years and how they've kind of ended up the way that they are wanting to help others. Hi, welcome. I'm Megan Zeckman. I'm with Education Possible, and this is my husband, Craig. I blog over at Education Possible with Susan Williams, and we talk all about homeschooling, middle school, and high school. And so today, again, we're talking about raising compassionate and charitable teens. So one of the first things that we did and it's a little harder when your kids are young, but we tried to find as many opportunities as we could to do things as a family, right? Yeah, so what absolutely. It... So I think some of the early things we did were things where you could take smaller kids. So we looked at church events and things like um, soup kitchens. Um, we've done building playgrounds. So while they can't necessarily do some of the construction pieces, they can certainly help with kind of planting the flower beds or spreading the mulch that goes around in the playground areas. And Kaboom is one of those organizations that does that. You can look it up and they're real easy. You just sign up and show up and they have uh, lunch for you typically and, and food. And, and then they'll just divide into tasks that are age appropriate. Um, and it's just a lot of fun to do that. Yeah, we did that when the kids were a little bit younger. They were still, um, I want to say, probably 11 and 9. So, again, we weren't taking really little. But there were some people there with, you know, 7, 8-year-old kids, uh, maybe even 6. And they also painted some things for the opening. It was an opening of, um, they were going to be having this big opening of, uh, it was almost like, it wasn't a YMCA, but it was an organization that was building this, wanted this playground built for the community. And so we went and did that. And so as your kids get older, there obviously is, there's many more opportunities for them to go and serve. And so if you do it as a family, then they know that it's important to you. You set it as a dynamic as part of your, it's part of your family dynamic. So it yeah. becomes part of the fabric of who you are as a family, right? Yeah. And they expect to serve. Yeah, absolutely. And there's even times where you can serve. And if your kids are young, sometimes they'll offer childcare. And just the fact that they see you serving or they know that you're serving, even if they can't, that's a great opportunity then for them to understand that it's important to you so that as they get older and they'll, they'll want to serve and help you um, in the different places that you might uh, be uh, stepping out and helping with. So check, check your work. We actually do some of ours through Disney. Uh, Craig works at Disney, so we do some of that through the opportunities that they provide the, the um, employees cast members because they obviously expect us to be serving with families. Um, we've done things with her church, as he said. We've done things with other organizations um, that, you know, places that run soup kitchens or things like that. We have a place near us where they clean soap, uh, clean the world, and it takes soap and shampoos from all the hotels because we live in Central Florida, so we have tons of hotels here. And so looking for opportunities wherever you can to serve and it takes a little work to find them if your kids aren't 12 and older most want your kids to be at least 12 years old but you can find opportunities if they're younger and then what we've seen is that because we have done charitable work as a couple and then as a family our kids actually now do it on their own so once you establish it as a family then I think it's important for them to find something that they're passionate about mm -hmm. And so both of our kids do something, they each do something completely different. And so you want to share what our kids do? Sure. So our oldest or our youngest is involved. Um, she's a black belt in Taekwondo. And so one of the things she does is she's an instructor. And so she helps younger students, um, actually older students too, but lower belt students in terms of how uh, they're developing and, and learning the craft and the art form. Um, and so she helps out there. And then our oldest is um, works with three-year-olds. So on, on Saturday evenings when we attend church, she'll go and she will um, go in with the three-year-olds and help serve there by helping to take care of them, help with story and playtime and all of those. Yeah, it's been really neat to see. 
Um, I know Abigail gets really bummed if we have to miss church if we're out of town. Um, she gets really worried if it's on her week. And then uh, Mariana just has really loved serving at Taekwondo. It's been an instructor for quite a while now. She used to work with the really little kids at one of the schools she was at. I'm just kind of hoping that the new school she's at will get the really little ones because she really likes teaching the three yeah. and four year olds how to do Taekwondo. And so hopefully you see that uh, for us, I, we fully believe that raising um, compassion in a charitable teen starts with you. Uh, you can't expect them to have this heart for people and this desire to serve if you don't do it yourself. Now I know you're busy, we're all busy. Um, and that's why doing it as a family is a great thing to do because then you're still bonding together. And one of the other thing we do, um, I totally forgot about it. We pack kids packs at our church and we, the kids and I distribute them because um, they're during the work hours. So Craig has to work. But on Saturdays during the summer, um, we'll pack these bags for people who are hungry because uh, we have a lot of free breakfasts and lunch kids in our area. And so they go hungry when the school is not in session. And so they, our church steps up and does that. And the kids get really excited about that. So the other thing that happens with your kids that you really need them to see is you having compassion for your friends, for the community that you're a part of. So we don't really have neighborhoods anymore, but we've all built little communities that we're a part of. And so, um, for example, one of the things, you know, this past week, we we had all these plans, the girls and I. So we had plans on Sunday night. We had plans Monday morning, plans Monday afternoon. And they all went out the window. And so I was calm and collected and um, just said we need to do what's what we need to do. And so the kids had expectations for Monday afternoon. They were going to go to the library to see um, the teen movie. And the opportunity came about to help our friends because uh, one of the cars is breaking down and another one needed help making something for church. And so we all kind of worked together to make sure that that thing, the stuff got made, the person who had to get to a, a play, a, a wedding, uh, what's it called, rehearsal, she had to get out of town to get to that to help out. So we made sure she could get there and then we made sure that the family could get home safely. And so the kids see that, that it's, we don't make a big deal. It's not like we, oh, our day got all messed up. It's, it's just what it is. It's what we, what we do. And then um, we're actually planning, we're working with another family with part of our life group um, for this weekend. Yeah. So we're helping them do something special. Yeah. So um, one of our friends, they, they got married two years ago, but apparently he never really asked his, his wife to marry her. Uh, to marry him. And so um, she's been a little bitter about that. And so we're working this weekend to work with him to put a surprise together where she'll do a little scavenger hunt um, at this event that we're going to um, step up with and meet a couple folks within our life group who are helping um, and get a rose. And then she'll end with him at the end where he'll be down on his knee and actually ask her to marry him again or for the first time here um, <laughs> so that she then has a story to be able to tell. Yeah. And so we've been talking about this with the kids. Now, they obviously know that it's a surprise, and so they haven't been t sharing with her kids or um, her or anything, but they know what we're doing. And, you know, we share when appropriate. We certainly give certain things. We give monetarily um, that we don't share with the kids. They know that we give to organizations, but they don't know when we share with our friends, um, when people are in trouble and we help out. But we, we share with them as much as we can, and they see that we're working really hard to help when we can. And so then they want to help their friends, and we've seen it pass on to them that they just have this heart for people, and that's kind of what we want. We want them to be a part of a community, but be a caring part of the community. We want them to give, and um, th their friends really respect them for that, and they're well-liked um, because they just think they're really fun and they're just really nice that they that they want to step up. And so, you know, again, we're here, we're talking about raising compassionate and charitable teens. And it really starts with with you and your and your husband, your spouse, if you're married, or you. Um, you can't expect your kids to do something that you're not doing on a regular basis. It's not that hard. I don't no. think. 
It just, you just make a part of your daily routine. And you have to put yourself second sometimes, and that's okay. And it's really good to teach our kids that the world doesn't revolve around them as much as they think that it does, <laughs> and that it, we can really do something to brighten other people's days. So hopefully you've um, gotten some ideas of how you and your family can serve a little bit. And we want to thank you for joining us. Again, I'm Megan Zekman, and this is my husband, Craig. And I'm with EducationPossible.com. And we have a Facebook group where moms and dads talk about all things middle school and high school. And we also are part of the Homeschool Scope. So if you're a homeschooler, check out Homeschool Scopes on Periscope because there's a ton of us talking about homeschooling. And I'll be back on Monday at 1.30 to talk about, I don't know what I'm going to be talking about. I think I'm talking about some type, something that we're using in our homeschool. So I'll see you then. Have a great weekend. Bye.